want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. Freddie and Fitz. This is the Freddie and Fitz podcast on ESPN Radio. Freddie and Fitz on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app and Series X and Channel 80, brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Don't forget to subscribe to the Freddie and Fitz podcast. You can do that courtesy of iTunes. So San Antonio, two games to nothing on Memphis. They struggled a little bit tonight before getting the win. I guarantee you nobody will be talking about that. They'll be talking about David Fizdale's rant, the Memphis coach, at a foul called discrepancy against this team. Let's bring in Michael Wright, ESPN NBA reporter for the San Antonio Spurs. He joins us thanks to show Pinto performance line. Mike, before I get to the game, and Kawhi Leonard was terrific. What were people saying about David Fisdale's rant in which he just crushed the officiating and did not like the disparity in foul calls, not in favor of his team? Well, I, we, I was just in the media room, and everybody's laughing, talking about how they've hashtag take that data. That's what he said <laughs> before he slammed that head down on the table, man. It was, you know, it's it, 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 it's a weird well, – he's going to get fined. Just believe that. He he will have some of that check, some of that money taken from him. But, you know, it's a weird deal because, you know, I, I kind of see what he's saying, but I think this was more about rallying his troops and maybe buying some calls when they go back home, back home on Thursday. That's kind of what I think it was about. Like, hey, you know, we came so close. They came, from, they came back from 26 points down and got the game to within four. So when you do that and then you lose the way you did, especially with all the, the discrepancy in the foul shooting, you know, then you can tell your guys, like, hey, man, you know, you, you guys came back. You worked hard, brought us all the way back. You showed what we could do against this team with this championship pedigree, and the refs took it from us. And so that will have his team more motivated, and hopefully it will get him some calls once they go to Memphis. That was going to be my next question, Michael, is – you're there, right? I mean, you watched every single bucket, every single call, every single foul that was or was not called. Did it seem that it was that far in favor of San Antonio and against Memphis to have him get up there and take that data? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, did, I didn't see it that way. I didn't see it really that lopsided. I thought it was a, a pretty fairly called game. But, you know, this is what Memphis has to expect. That's the style they play. They play a rough, rugged style. And, you know, Patty Mills, he's from Australia. He said they, they, they crack you. And, 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 and think of me saying that with an Aussie accent. <laughs> he, said they like, he said they like to crack you. And, you know, when you play that type, that style of basketball, then that's what you, you have to expect from the officials. You play that type of basketball – you intimidate opponents. You kind of get them back on their heels. You have them, you know, you kind of have them discombobulated, struggling. But the foul calls are the price you pay for playing that, that style. And I, I just don't think that you can have it both ways here. So, you know, just from what I saw, I thought it was pretty fairly efficient, fairly a fairly called cool game. So I don't know what David is talking about. But like I said, I think this is just more of a ploy to, to get his guys going because they're down 2-0. And, you know, the odds say – yeah, when you get down 2-0, it, it's real hard to come back. As a matter of fact, I won't say the Spurs are like something like 21-5 and five or 21-2 mm. and two or something like that. I was just looking at the stat earlier. Wow. Michael Wright, ESPN NBA reporter for the San Antonio Spurs. I'm Freddie and Fitz on ESPN Radio. Based on what you just said, but we know how Greg Popovich is. He does not like people thinking about the next series or being complacent. But how does San Antonio avoid that knowing that, hey, we, these, we know this team's not going to back down but we know we're clearly better than this basketball team. Well, you know what? I, you, like you said, you know, teams try to say they're not going to look ahead or they try to say they don't look ahead. But to me, you got to look ahead because the Houston Rockets or the Oklahoma City Thunder, whichever team they end up getting in the second round, if they get to the second round, they play totally different, uh, totally different styles than the Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies – play even slower than the Spurs in terms of uh, in terms of pace. And if you play Oklahoma City or Houston, you're talking about two teams with the fastest paces. So, you know, to me, those are su- such different styles from what they're facing now that you got to think ahead because if you don't, you're not doing your due diligence, in my opinion. So I guarantee you that, you know, somebody is, is 
kind of, you know, I, I know they've got scouts out at, at, at the Houston game, and, and, and you know, they're, they're watching that series. They got scouts out there, and they're putting something together to where they can handle that type of opponent. But you know, I, I will say this: even though they are up to them, I, I just think that anything can happen in Memphis. I've seen it. I've seen it. I mean, I remember if you go and uh, let's, let's take Memphis out of it and go to Oklahoma City last year. You know, they blow out the Thunder by 30 points in game one, and they end up losing the, the series in the Western Conference semifinals. So, you know, I, I don't think you can put anything past another opponent at this point in the season because we're talking about the postseason and, and things, you know, can be really strange here. So, you know, I, I think San Antonio got them a very good win tonight. And, and to go up to them, that gives them a great cushion. But, you know, I, I, this is one of those series where, you know, if it's, I, I could see them sweep. I could see them sweep in Memphis. And then if you sweep Memphis, you got a couple days to rest. And I guarantee you they'll really be getting ready for that second round opponent. So I just think it's just natural when you're in a situation like this to kind of look to that, that potential next opponent. ESPN NBA reporter for the Spurs, Michael Wright, is here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line here on Freddie and Fitz on ESPN Radio. Looking back on an interesting game, too, between Grizz and Spurs uh, tonight. And Freddie and I were talking about this earlier, Michael, and I'm curious to get your thoughts because you're around him a lot. In our opinion, Kawhi Leonard is, is arguably the best two-way player in the entire league, and he had another sensational game tonight. But if he were to walk down – Hollywood Boulevard, right, or the Sunset Strip in L.A., or you know, go walk into the most popular place in South Beach in Miami, there's a pretty darn good shot that one of the best players in the NBA does not get recognized. Does he like <laughs> this? Does he like it that way? He doesn't do a lot of interviews. I mean, describe Kawhi Leonard the person. Does he like a warm blanket of anonymity for one of the best players in the league? Yeah, yeah it's the strangest thing because, look, you know, when you – if you go go back to last year, I remember when, you know, he drived to the basket and he, and he was he was kind of going David Fisdale. He, he felt like he wasn't getting the respect. He wanted to get the respect, you know, on, on the calls and things like that. And so, you know, now he gets it. He's blown up to this this, this, this superstar. And Kawhi, yeah, I mean, he, he, if you get him alone and you get him comfortable, like, you know, we actually had a, a debate about the, the top ten rappers of all time. It was Kawhi, me, and another guy in the locker room. And we were just going back and forth because this dude had Rick Ross in his top ten and Kawhi couldn't believe it. And, and then, neither can, and neither like can most, I, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was like the most animated I've ever seen Kawhi get. He was laughing, cracking jokes, and I was like, wow, what Kawhi is this? I mean, he's not he, – you, 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 you guys are absolutely right. Like, if you saw him, like, on the Hollywood strip or whatever – it, it wouldn't be that you wouldn't notice him because you've noticed him, but you certainly wouldn't hear him because he doesn't hardly say a lot. He just, he, that's just him. And like I said, when you can get him talking on a personal level and things like that, he still really doesn't have a ton to say. I mean, it's a little bit more than what you're going to get in the interview setting, but no, I mean, that, that is just Kawhi. And I think that he's just a, he's just naturally a shy guy. He's shy. And the, the limelight sort of, you know, he kind of, sh- shrinks away from it. I mean, watch him in his post-game interviews. I think he had a post-game interview tonight on TNT, and, and I, I didn't get to hear it because I was doing other things, but I guarantee you he didn't say much more than about 15, 20 words. Who did you have number one in your rapper of all time? I'm dying to know this answer. <laughs> number one? Yeah. Ah, uh, no, see, you, you, Freddie, you ain't put me on blast. <laughs> oh, hell, all the tw- the tw- <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. This thing that Kendrick Lamar just dropped, man, I, I got to put him up there somewhere. I'm, and I'm saying like top 10, top 15, somewhere up there, man. Top 15, because yes. He, yeah, top 15, yes, not top 10. Dude, but I mean, what, four straight classics? I understand I mean, I, that. Every one of them are classics. He, he still got a long way to go before he gets to rock him, before he gets to Tupac, before he gets to B.I.G. You know, he's got a, he's still got a ways to go, in my opinion. He does, he does, but I'm just saying, when you drop, like, four straight classics, man, you, you, he's got to be in the conversation. Yeah. It, it's almost like Kawhi Leonard. You know, I keep saying, you know, everybody's disregarding him in terms of the whole MVP conversation, but Kawhi deserves to be a part of the conversation, just like Kendrick Lamar deserves to be a part of the conversation when you're talking about the top rappers of all time. Okay. Why do to... I feel like I'm being left out of this part of the conversation? Why, wait a minute. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> also, also, now there's black privilege on Freddie and Fitz now. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> 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 
Okay. It's called lack of knowledge. <laughs> I can see it now. That'll be the hashtag. Oh, they got black privilege on Freddie and Fitz. He got left out. We can't have that. Uh, Michael, great stuff, my bud, man. We'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Michael. Michael Wright, ESPN NBA reporter, the San Antonio Spurs. We were trying to make you feel left out, Ian. I, mean, hey, I saw straight out of Compton. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh, honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, All right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors Mm -hmm. (laughs) and shades. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer.